Gavin Williamson, the Secretary of State for Education, has expressed plans to maintain free speech at universities in England, where he describes there to be unacceptable silencing and censoring. This includes the appointment of a free speech champion who will check the university's platforming of speakers. This measure obligates universities to actively promote free speech and subjects them to sanctions if they fail to invoke these procedures. However, the National Union of Students says that there is no evidence of a problem with freedom of speech on campus and the Russell Group have expressed that they believe wholly in the autonomy of universities. There has been a wide range of opinion in reaction to these proposals, with 52% of British adults who think that free speech is under threat in universities. The government says that they hope to materialise these measures as soon as possible. And now, over to Pippa for some good news about festivals. On Monday, Boris Johnson announced his much-anticipated four-step plan for his roadmap out of lockdown. This includes news that on April 12th, shops, gyms, hairdressers and outdoor public spaces are expected to reopen. Following this, the mixing of two households may be allowed from as early as the 17th of May, with the rule of six expected to be reintroduced in places such as pubs. Schools will hopefully be reopening from the 8th of March, and from, and from the 29th of March, outdoor gatherings of up to six people are expected. However, the PM has said that this plan is dependent on a no-data, no-date strategy. And whilst he hopes that coming out of lockdown will be irreversible, there are no guarantees at this time. I spoke with third-year student Maya Varma to hear her thoughts on the news. I am looking forward to the possibility of all this ending, but as a final year student, I do feel quite frustrated that I only had one year of like this normal university experience. Um, and I guess I have quite mixed feelings in general about June 21st, because although I'm looking forward to it, I'm quite reluctant to get my hopes up too much because in the past there have been plans in place and um, there have been loads of delays in those plans. and. Also, I just feel like the idea that everything will just go back to normal um, is quite unrealistic to me. Now here's Gerard with the latest update on Reading and Leeds Festival. Thanks, Pippa. The Reading and Leeds Festivals are back this year. The organisers of the event said on Wednesday that the two festivals will be held on the 27th, 28th and 29th of August. This comes after Prime Minister Boris Johnson revealed in government's roadmap that legal limits on social contact will end by the 21st of June and that all adults will be offered a COVID-19 vaccine by the end of July. The headliners for the festivals are Stormzy, Post Malone and Liam Gallagher. Other acts include Queen of the Stone Age, Doja Cat, Tudor Cinema Club, Catfish and the Bottleman, Louis Capaldi and Da Baby, among others. The twin festivals were cancelled last year as a result of the pandemic just like most live music festivals in the UK and around the world. The live music industry has been hit hard. And just last month, the 2021 iteration of Glastonbury, the UK's biggest music festival was canceled. News of the Reading and Leeds festivals may, uh, reopening may come as a relief to those in the industry. Festival Republic, the organizers of the events, admitted that they were unable to get insured for the festival so far but are hopeful that the government might come up with an insurance scheme for live music next week. Tickets for the Leeds Festival are still available, but the Reading Festival is sold out. No other details have been released yet. A stabbing incident occurred in Fallowfield last week. Chloe has more on the story. Thanks, Sherrod. Derby Road, Fallowfield, is frequently talked about as being one of the safer roads in the area, a place where break-ins and commotions are less frequent. However, residents and students of Derby Road, including myself, were horrified to wake up to a police crime scene and forensic tent near the Edgerton Road end of Derby Road last Saturday morning. Last weekend, police were called to a house on Derby Road in the early hours of Saturday morning. It appears that neighbours heard the disturbance at around 1am and alerted police, who arrived to find that two men, aged 19 and 26, had been stabbed inside a student house party. Though the injuries that the victims sustained appear not to be life-threatening, a 20-year-old man and 22-year-old woman are being held in police custody for further questioning. The pair were accused of assault and possession with intent to supply. These news spoke to a witness who told us, it was a scary scene. At about three in the morning, police were going around asking for information. There were multiple police cars in a big tent. 
People were being led in and out of the police van, and I was worried that there might have been a death. Greater Manchester police have not made any further statements as yet. Here's Tom covering the Chinese New Year Gala. Yes, thanks, Chloe. The COVID-19 pandemic has seen many of us change our plans to be safe and coherent to the restrictions currently in place in the UK. And the Chinese Students and Scholars Association in Manchester were no different from that. They held their annual Chinese New Year Gala over the weekend of the 6th of February, only this time it was online. The event included various excellent programmes, including singing, dancing, performances of Chinese musical instruments, as well as appearances from some special guests. Amongst the speakers at this year's event was the Vice-Chancellor of the University of Manchester, Dame Nancy Rothwell, the Mayor of Greater Manchester, Andy Burnham, the Lord Mayor of the City of Manchester, Tommy Judge and his wife, Carol, as well as the Consulate General of the People's Republic of China in Manchester. 范应杰副总理事，赵江参赞等各位领导老师，曼彻斯特大学校长Nancy Try 中国元素乐带来的听觉盛宴跟春晚的尾声，大曼彻斯特市长Andy It's good to see that people are adapting to these times and can still celebrate something that obviously means so much to them. Now a look at the global headlines this week. In a major move, the US military has carried out an airstrike targeting Iran-backed militias in Syria. The Pentagon said that the attack destroyed multiple facilities located at a border control point used by a number of Iranian-backed militant groups. It was the first military action ordered by the Biden administration and came in response to attacks against US and, co and coalition personnel in Iraq. The Chinese President Xi Jinping says that in historical victory, China has eradicated extreme poverty. Speaking at one of the state ceremonies, Jinping said that over an eight-year period, nearly 100 million people have been lifted out of poverty. But some experts say that China has set a low bar in its definition of poverty and that ongoing investment is needed in its poorest areas. Social media giant Facebook has banned Myanmar's military and its affiliates from using its platforms. The military has used Facebook to boost its claim of voter fraud in the 2020 election, as more than 54 million people of Myanmar use Facebook. Also, since the military seized power in Myanmar, it has arrested protesters, ordered internet blackouts and also banned social media platforms, including Facebook and Instagram. The captive daughter of Dubai's ruler, Princess Latifah, has appealed to UK police to reinvestigate the kidnap of her older sister from a Cambridge street more than 20 years ago. In a letter, Latifah tells Cambridge police that this could help free Princess Shamza, who was captured on the orders of her father. In August 2000, Shamza was forcibly taken from Cambridge to Dubai and since then has not been seen in public. And finally... A group of Russian diplomats and their families made a rather unusual exit out of North Korea on a hand-pushed rail trolley due to strict COVID measures. Since early last year, trains and wagons have been forbidden to enter or leave the country. Most international passenger flights have also been suspended. That's why the Russian diplomats were thus left with little choice. That is all from us this week here at Fuse News. Don't forget to tune in next week, every day at 6pm. We have live hustings for the new Students' Union Exec Officers We'll also be back next Friday at the usual time of quarter to 12. Have a good weekend. Goodbye.